so after the initiation process has occurred, a few things have gone on. We formed our initiation complex of transcription factors. The RNA polymerase has joined and that has produced a transcription bubble. And what happens now is that because this bubble has formed, we now have two different strands of DNA that are both going to serve very important roles in the elongation phase, which is what we're focusing on now. Elongation essentially is the extension of your transcript. And so here we have our RNA polymerase and it will be moving along this strand here. Notice that it's reading in the three to five direction, read up, and it will be writing it's the new transcript from the five end to the three end. And so write down, read up and write down is a general way of looking at any polymerase and its function. And the two strands that we have are the plus strand, which will also be called the sense strand, and the minus strand, which is antisense or template strand. And these both serve an important purpose. The sense strand is the part of a loop that is not involved with the RNA polymerase moving along it, but it does protect that exposed region. It protects that exposed region from exonucleases that sometimes degrade nucleic acids, and it protects it from other interfering factors. So this loop up here is going to be protecting the template strand that we'll be doing the elongation phase on. The other thing to notice is that this strand is called the plus strand. Even though it's not the one being replicated, it's a strand that is going to mirror the overall structure and sequence of the bases because you're going to build new RNA that is complementary to this strand. And this strand is also complementary to our template strand. And so the new transcript that we're forming will resemble very similarly the plus strand, the sense strand. And that's why they call it plus or sense, whereas this other one is anti-sense. It's the complementary strand. The only difference, of course, is that the new transcript that we're making is RNA. And so its bases will involve uracil U rather than thymine T. And so what will happen is after the, we move past the promoter, the RNA polymerase will come along and it will simply produce a primary transcript with the other bases. So it'll have a G in place of the C, it will have an A that pairs or is complementary with the T. Here's where it gets somewhat different, the uracil and the A. We have a C here, we have Gs that are complementary to the C. We have A, uracil, 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 and another adenine. And what you'll notice here is that, yes, this is serving as the template, but the structure actually highly resembles this one. We have a GAUC here, whereas we had a GATC like that. Then we have two Gs, we have two Gs here. And so the, the primary transcript, the HNRNA that we're forming with our RNA polymerase will very similarly mirror this plus or sense strand and that will later be processed and used to make the proteins in the translation process. What you really need to think about with elongation is first about that transcription bubble and it will advance along as the RNA polymerase moves along as well. So this transcription bubble may open up in order to allow more transcription to occur up until you reach a termination sequence that will signify that it's time to end this primary transcript. You should be aware of the plus or sense strand that is serving a protector function as well as looking a lot like the primary transcript that is formed because their base sequences are both complementary to our template. And then just be aware of this negative or anti-sense strand that is the template that is complementary and thus gives the RNA polymerase instructions for what bases to lay down, what ribonucleotides to lay down as it produces this pre-mRNA transcript there. So the elongation process is not too complicated. What you should know is the transcription bubble, the two different strands, and that 
It reads three to five along the template strand. It reads from the three end of the template strand to the five end, but it writes down a new one that has a five prime end there and a three prime end there. So once again, read up and write down is the motif that you see when polymerases are performing their function.